Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keegan and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a late start to the Supercoach Diaries for 2019. As you can see, oh, let me take these off. <laughs> As you can see, it hasn't been the greatest start. Oh, before we do that, of course, I hope that you've had a good start to your Supercoach uh, season. Let me know in the comments below how far, how you're doing for your Supercoach so far, because we like being interactive here. Usually what I was doing last season is if you wrote a comment down below, most of the time I was getting around to replying some more because I do like conversing. I do like having your ideas in the show and I'm, it's great to see um, that, that so many people did converse last season. So hopefully, even though it is a really late start this season, I apologize. If you haven't been watching my other videos, it's basically to do with moving from um, Manchester to Melbourne. So I've got a proper computer now. I've got all that going on. So I've got it all set up and I'm really, really excited to get back into this. So without any further ado, let's have a look at the Supercoach stuff in general. So you can see I got 2,025 in round six. Pretty poor score, top 41%, not great. Um, and the top, my total score puts me in the top 22%, which is not where I want to be. It's somewhere I can definitely recover from because I've been lower before, but it wasn't great. And my season rank actually has dropped. I was in the top 40,000. I've now dropped down to 44,000. Uh, for those that watched last year, I actually ended up being in the top 5,000 last season, which was a really good effort. Um, but as you can see, not a good start this season. I'm going to show you my team and I'm going to explain my choices um, and maybe some trades that I've made already. As you can see, I've already, when I switch over to the team, you'll see I've only used, I've already used, well, yeah, you can see it there, um, 20 trades. So I've already used 10, which is not good. Uh, it's been a bit of recovery. I've had a few injuries along the way, but let's have a look at my team and I'll explain it to you and about the choices that I made this week. So as you can see, here's my team. You can look, if you look in the top right, you'll see there's two hours left of the start of round seven. I'm um, reporting this Friday afternoon. I've just got home from work. So I thought I'd get this guy, this out to you. So here's the team. It's looking a bit battered and bruised to be fair. And the fact that I've used 10 trades and I've only gotten to this point is really disappointing. But anyway, let's talk you through some of the thing, trades. So Hearn was someone I've brought in recently. Uh, a couple of rounds ago, he's. I'm pretty happy with him. I think he'll be there at the end of the year. Brody Smith, someone I actually started the season with. I was pretty happy with that. Um, he was a good pickup, I think, and he's done pretty well as far as defender goes. My defenders, I sort of want to average over 95, so an average of 93 isn't too far away from that. Williams has been up and down, scored massive last week, an average of 91. I've had him since the start, um, and again, average of 91. I want it to get to that 95 level. Um, Wilkie and Dersma are rookies, and Hawes also a rookie. Um, Wilkie's probably going to get traded maybe this um, after this round. Uh, Scrimshaw, you can see on the bench as well, he's probably going to look to be traded as well. Dersma, I think I've got another probably another round I can do with him. And Hawes got a few rounds. He did have a few rounds off in the middle um, of this first six rounds, so he's got some um, he's got some growing to do. So I'm happy to have him in because he started to hit some straps and he's been scoring pretty well. Average of 81 is nothing to sneeze at. If you look to the bench, you can see Scrimshaw, as I've talked about already. I'm probably looking to trade him on. He's had a really good start to the season. As you know, as a Gold Coast Suns fan. I don't like seeing Scrimshaw do well. Uh, for him personally, I'm glad he's doing well. But as a Sun supporter, letting him go for pretty much next to nothing and him doing well um, hurts a bit. I understand, um, and Sun supporters will say, I understand that there are reasons we let's get, go with Scrimshaw and that's there's no argument there. But um, yeah, he's doing well, doing well for my super coach team at least. And Lockie Whitfield is on the bench injured. Usually he'd be in the team, probably over Wilkie, but... Um, Whitfield is injured, hopefully only for this week, so I'm going to keep him there and then bring him in. He's also someone else that I've traded in um, this season as well. I can't remember who I traded out um, for Lockie Whitfield. Um, it might have been Callum Mills. Mill I did start with Callum Mills at the start of the season. He was being very poor, so I had to um, I offed him, unfortunately. Um, so that's my back line. Uh, I'm relatively happy with my back line when Whitfield's playing. Only two rookies, and I could probably upgrade Williams as well. Smith's playing pretty well, so I don't really see the point to upgrade him maybe towards the end of the season if he starts slowing down a bit. But at the moment, my back line, if I was to give it a sort of a mark out of 10, maybe a 6, um, definitely room for improvement, but not an absolute disaster. Uh, if you look into the midfield, this is where I'm, I've been a bit upset with how my scoring's been going. And you know the midfield is, the, is one of, is, well, I would say is the most important positions 
in your super coach, and mine just haven't been performing that well. Uh, Cripps only got 93 last week. He's been scoring pretty well. I'm not too worried about him. The issue was I accidentally had, as you can see, I got the captaincy and co-captain uh, and the vice captain. I had the vice captaincy on Grundy, and I meant to switch Cripps over, but I was so busy, busy last weekend that I actually didn't get a chance to switch Cripps over, and Cripps only ended up scoring 93 on Sunday afternoon, which kind of hurt my score a bit. If I'd be able to switch, if I was able to sort those captaincies out, I probably would have had a bit of a better time of it. Um, and I might have had a bit of a better score and not dropped so far. But mistakes happen. Put your hand up and say, that's just what happens. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, McCray got 85. He started the season so well. He's starting to taper off a little bit. So, one to watch. Um, one Definitely one to watch there. Uh, five, I've actually bought in this week. He's at a very, very cheap 564. Um, and currently, I think, if we would click over here, I think five break even is 90. So there's a pretty good chance he hits that and he starts um, putting his scores back north. So he's in this week. What I did is, um, and you won't obviously tell because uh, I've already made the trades, I actually traded um, Tom Libertore out because he, I know people think he might come back or might not come back, but I thought at Fife at that price was just too good to pass down. So what I did is I traded um, Bailey Scott, who started the season really well again, but is sort of not playing for North Melbourne at the moment. I traded him down to Will Hayes on the bench for the Bulldogs, as you can see. And I used that money that I had and the money I already had at my bank and I upgraded Liberatore to Fife, which I think is a pretty good pick. As you can see, I've only got 400 salary left, so he used my money very, very wisely. Um, I wish I had a little bit more maybe there just in case they, I get an injury and I need to make a quick uh, side trade, but not too worried about that at the moment. Um, Clayton Oliver... Started the season poorly, starting to sort of work his way into it a bit. So 105, I'm going to stick with him because there's no point dropping him now when he's lost his value. I think he'll start bouncing back, so I'm going to keep him there. Rockcliffe, um, I think I brought Rockcliffe in. I, I um, That's all right, I brought Rockcliffe in because I had Miles, Anthony Miles from the Suns. And Rockcliffe and Miles were around about the same price. And I thought Miles would start the season a bit better. He's still been okay from a Suns point of view. But for a Supercoach scoring point of view, hasn't done enough. Um, so I actually traded him out, put Rockcliffe in, and Rockcliffe has made me a fair bit of money, so we're pretty happy with that, and I think we're going to stick with him for a little while yet. Um, Crouch, I started with, eh, mid-pricer, 85. He's got an average of 95. As a mid-pricer, I want to see him get that average over 100. Um, but at the moment, 95. He's okay. He's not He's not one of my big worries. Walsh has been an absolute gun. No complaints about him at all. They're saying that he's starting to sort of reach the end of his tether a bit 67 break even so he probably hit that hit that this week and or depending on how well he hits it he might be someone you might, I might need to look at moving on maybe perhaps um we'll wait and see uh ross brought him in very happy with that negative 35 break even can't complain 89 last week hopefully he scores similarly uh he took over from constable who's been playing well 100 303 uh, not playing this week, so again, he's definitely a downgrade target. But I actually don't mind having players there that um, that aren't scoring because if they're not playing, their score their scores aren't going down. Yes, they're not making money, but their scores aren't going down. So I can I'm happy to sort of balance that for a little while. Uh, Sydney Stack, another good player. I'm gl glad I brought in. Uh, Richmond have had some really good youngsters this season. Um, so Stack started at 102. He started at the lowest possible price a player can start. Start at, so I'm pretty happy with him. And Will Hayes, I brought in this week. Uh, average of 62. If he keeps that average, I'll be pretty happy. Um, hopefully he gets a few games in here and there. It might be a little bit of a, a worrisome pick because I know it's a bit of a it's a bit of a stretch just to get Fife enough panic, just enough to get Fife into the team, but we'll wait and see. Uh, Rux, Brody Grundy, I'm glad I picked him up. 124 average, can't complain about that as a starting Ruck. Goldstein, I took a bit of a punt on. I don't know how I feel about it. It's it's one of those things where I'm happy that he, I think he needs to be averaging over. He needs to get that average up to maybe 105, 110 because I could be have I could have had Gorn in there at the start of the season. I went cheaper to get Goldstein, and I don't know if it's paid off at the moment. But anyway, we'll leave that there. We're pretty happy. We're not as happy with Goldstein. He needs. He's on definitely on the watch out list. But hopefully. Once North Melbourne start playing a bit better, maybe that means Goldstein starts scoring a bit better. Who knows? Uh, Dangerfield, had him since the start. 111 
uh, average as a forward is great. He's not he's not scoring good for a midfielder, but as a forward, I'm happy to cop that. Um, yeah, can't say much more about that. Billings I had since the start of the season was interesting. I'm happy I've got him. His average is 96 for a forward. So defenders are like an average over 95. Premium midfielders like an average over probably 115, 120. Uh, forwards... I like an average over 95, so Billings is doing that at the moment. Not too worried about that. Kelly's the same. I actually started with Heaney, and I dropped I dropped Heaney the game before he played. He played someone in Sydney, I can't remember now, but he absolutely dominated. He kicked five goals, and he had a massive score that week, so that hurt me a bit. But Kelly's fine. Um, I'm hoping that he starts getting a bit more of the ball again. He's averaging 96, so I can't really complain as a forward line player. Um, Warple, averaging 92. Um, yeah, again, if he keeps that average about there for a forward line player, that's that's all right. I'm not too wor- worried about that. Darcy Moore's been handy because I've had to flip him back and forward a few times. So at the moment, he's in the forward line. Uh, he's someone that might, averaging 78, so he will be someone I move on eventually. He's got a break even of 46 at the moment. So he's still got a bit of money to make. So I'm pretty happy with that. But he's someone I've got to keep an eye on, potentially moving on. Uh, Drew... At break even a four, he's great as a as a rookie forward. The Port rookies as well as the Richmond rookies have been very good to us this year. I've already traded out um, Butters. I traded out earlier. Um, I think it was Butters. It was one of the Port rookies, but anyway, he got traded out. And my forward line rookies are pretty poor. Setterfield and Burgess. They're there mostly because well, Setterfield hasn't played in a couple of weeks, and I think he might start playing this week. I'm not sure if it'll tell me here. He's selected as an emergency. Um, I don't know if he's come, if he's playing this week because can't play Sunday, so they have an extended bench. But I can downgrade him whenever. Burgess is on the Suns. He's not playing, um, and he won't be for a while. So he won't be one I'll downgrade as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's my team. It's overall... Sorry, I gave I gave a score for my back line, not for the rest. Midfield, I'm probably a 5 out of 10 as far as happy with it. There's definitely improvements to make. There's definitely better players. Missing Lockie Neal is huge and is really annoying me. Like, I'll sometime, at some point, I'll have to bite the bullet and bring in Lockie Neal. Um, maybe Walsh, maybe the Walsh trade, trade down one of my defenders or something like that and change Walsh into Neal. That might be something I do, but who knows. Um, my Rucks, I'm probably again a five. I'm glad I got Grundy, but I'm disappointed with Goldstein. Uh, yeah. Ford line... Uh, I'll probably maybe a six like my bat defend my defense not not amazing but it's doing the job at the moment my rookies and my forward line are a bit of a worry um but hey that's just the way it goes sometimes uh so that's my team they're the trades I made as far as captaincy this week goes let's uh let's have a look at what we've got so we've got Collingwood and Port I usually like looking at the Friday and probably the early Saturday games for captains so, Grundy against Lysette. Grundy might not get a lot of the ball. Oh, he, he might get a lot of the ball, but he might not dominate the ruck against Lysette, who's a pretty good ruckman, as well as Paddy Ryder. I don't know if Paddy Ryder's playing for playing for Port at the moment, but I might not go there for that. Um, doesn't seem to be a lot of options, to be fair. Um, maybe the Bulldogs against Richmond with McRae, hoping McRae backs it up. That could be a go. Um, Fife Sunday, he could be a possibility of a captaincy as opposed to a vice-captain. But at the moment, as far as vice-captaincy goes, um, I think vice-captain I might go with... I'm going to go with Grundy as a vice-captain. I hope he scores pretty big against Port, even though he might struggle a bit. But he always gets a lot of the ball anyway, so who knows, he might score well again. As far as a captain goes, that could be a good scorer sort of in the later games. I think we might go with... I want to go with Cripps, but I'm not sure. Let's go with Fife. If Fife scores me 128 as a captain, he's against Adelaide, so he might not get a tons of the ball. Um, so it's a bit of a worry. I might switch the captaincy up before Sunday. But at the moment, Fife's where I'm going to sit with my captain. And that is my super coach for round six. Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure you do like this video, subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos of the Supercoach Diaries on this channel. Um, as always, do let me, in the, let me know in the comments below. Because I'm late to the party this season, as far as the Supercoach diary goes, Diaries go, let me know how is your Supercoach experience getting on. Where are you rated? Where are you... Where are you... Um, where? Are, what changes have you made this week? Who have you traded out? Who have you traded in? Let me know in the comments below and I will read and try and get back to them as many or all of them.
if I can as possible. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.